friends. It's good to see you, even though I can't really see you. But I was really sad when I was told yesterday that we couldn't come back to school for two weeks. It's because someone that's around us was showing signs that they might be sick. And so our principal said, hey, we're not going to take any chances. Let's not come to school for preschool for two weeks. So you're going to be home and not come to school for just a little while. And as soon as the principal says it's okay, we'll go back. I'm going to be making these videos so that every day that you would be coming to school, you can do the same lesson that we would be doing on floor time, but you can do them at home. When we're doing these videos together, you watching, me talking, I want you to pay attention and do things that I ask you to do. It's really important that you learn everything that I'm teaching you so that when we come back to school, you'll be ready to learn the next thing. One of the things I'm going to be asking you to do is to repeat after me. It's just like we do in school. I say something, you say the same thing after I'm finished. That's what repeat means. It means to do the same thing that someone else does. All right? Sometimes I might be using my hands, and I'll ask you to use your hands in the same way. Let's practice. I'm going to say a word, and you repeat it. Hello. Did you say hello? That's what you should have done. Good morning. Did you say good morning? All right, I think you have it. Let's try one more time with our hands. I'm going to say a word, and I'm going to use my hands, and I want you to do the same thing. Hello. Did you do that correctly? Good job. After you're done watching these videos, I've shared the playlist from YouTube that I use when we're waiting for people to finish eating their snacks. Maybe you could ask your mom or dad or babysitter or whoever you're with if they'll put that playlist on so that you can sing the songs and do the dances and hear the stories that we might have done in school. All right, are you ready? Let's do this. Let's begin by saying the alphabet. I'll show the card and say the letter, and then I want you to say the same letter after me. I want you to repeat it. All right, are you ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, C. Did you repeat after me? Good job. This week we started learning about the letter A. The letter A is the first letter in our alphabet, and it has an uppercase or a capital letter A and a lowercase letter A. We're going to mostly be learning about the uppercase or capital A right now, and we're also going to learn the short vowel sounds first. Your parents know what that means probably more than you do. But what it means is I'm going to teach you the sound a ah, for the letter A. A ah, like an apple or astronaut. The sign for the letter A is you put your hand in the air with your palm, that's this side of your hand, your palm facing out, and you're going to move your hand up around, down, up, down. So it's up, around, up, down. And we do it like this. A says, ah, ah, apple. All right, that's the letter A. This is a huge blue letter A. Here's a little bit smaller blue, uppercase A. Below that one, I'm going to put a smaller green A, and under the green A, I 
put a red A. How many A's did I put over in a row? One, two, three. You could say the blue A is on top, the green A is in the middle, and the red A is on the bottom. And let's do the A sign one more time. Put your hand in the air with your palm out, and then go up, down, up, down. A says ah, ah, apple. Good job. Practice finding A's around the room you're in or in your house. And every time you see the letter A, tell someone. All right, now let's count all the way to 20. This time, instead of holding up the numbers like I do in school, I'm going to point to the numbers on my board. I'll start with one, and I'll go across, and I'll keep going until I get to 20. I want you to repeat the numbers after me, all right? Let's do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. How'd you do? We haven't counted that far in school. We've only been counting to nine. This was a little harder, but I think you're ready for it. Let's review the number one. This is the number one the way I show you in school. Sometimes the number one is going to be written in a different way. Right here, this orange number one has a little line at the top. Some people might think it looks like a different number called seven, but today this is the way one of our number ones look. Sometimes you might even see the number one written like this, the line down and then a line at the top and the line at the bottom. They all mean the same thing, one. Would you hold up one finger and show it to me? One. Good job. Now hold up one thumb. One. Very good. Sometimes in math and in games, we use something called die or dice. When you have one, it's supposed to be called a die. And when you have more than one, you call it dice. Sometimes I might mess up and just call it dice, but you'll know what I'm talking about. On the die, there are dots on this one. And what you do is you roll it, and whatever comes up on top is the number that it's referring to or talking about. So right here, this would be the number three. If my die rolls and it lands like this with this one on top, it means one. So that's what the one might look like on a die or dice. One. We've been talking a little bit about the tin frame. This is my tin frame and it's a big one and it's magnetic so I can stick it up on my dry erase board. The back of it is covered with magnet. and This board is made out of something called steel. So my magnet sticks to it. It got just a little bit bent when I stored it so this piece comes out a little bit. When I use a tin frame, and I'll use these a lot this year, the reason I use it is it's an easier way to show you numbers. Let's count and see how many squares are on my tin frame. One, two, three, four, five, five on this side, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten squares on the whole frame. Remember what I called this, a tin frame? You think you know why it's called a tin frame? It's because it looks like there's 10 little frames. Think about a picture. And a picture might have a picture of something pretty in the middle, and then it has a frame around the sides. Well, this has 10 frames all together. So I'm going to show you what one looks like on the tin frame. I put one red circle on my tin frame. If I flip it over, I have one yellow circle on my tin frame. The yellow doesn't show up as good, so most of the time I'm going to use the red side. One. It's still a one if I put this circle over here or if I put the circle here. It doesn't matter where I put the circle, it still means one. Clap your hands one time with me. One. That's the number one. Do you remember learning about this number? 
this is the number two. I actually have two number twos up here. One, two. I have a yellow one on top, and under the yellow two, I have a blue two. Hold up two fingers for me. Two. Did you hold up the same fingers I did? You could hold up your pointer and tall man, or your ring man and pinky, or your thumb and pinky. All of that shows two. Let's see what we can find two on our tin frame. One, two. Would this still be two if I put two circles up at the top? Yes, that would still be two. How about if I move the two circles like that? Would that still be two? Yes. It doesn't matter how I put those two circles on my tin frame. It's still two. Now I want to show you two dragons. One, two. Two dragons. And on our dice, or die, this is what two looks like when you use dots. One, two. I'm going to show you some shapes now, some of the shapes that we've learned. When I hold up the shape, see if you can say the name of it before I do. And you're going to notice that all of my shapes today are the same color. They're all blue. Are you ready? Rectangle. I started off with one of the hardest ones. Rectangle. Square. Circle. Triangle. Hexagon. And the last one, diamond, also called a rhombus. Now, I have some homework for you. Whatever room you're in right now, I want you to look around and see if you can find any squares. A square has four sides, one, two, three, four, and all of the sides are the same length. None of them are longer or shorter than the other sides. Maybe look at the ceiling and see if you have ceiling tiles. Maybe look down at the floor and see if you see any square tiles or squares on the floor. You could look for pictures that might be squares or windows. See how many squares you can find and check with a grown-up to see if you're correct. This is the part of the lesson when I'm teaching you to get ready to read. Remember on this lesson, I want you to do the same thing I do. I want you to repeat what I do. If I use my hands, you use your hands after me. I'm going to be looking down a lot because I'm reading some of these lessons from this book. All right, are you ready? The first part of the lesson is I'm going to say two words that rhyme. And when they rhyme, it means they sound the same at the end. I want you to listen to my words and then, when I finish the two words, I want you to say the same words. Are you ready? Let's go. Hot knot. Tug rug. Mad sad. Bell tell. Win pin. Did you hear why those words are called rhyming words? They sound the same at the end of each word. Now we're going to say words and we're going to listen for the sound we hear at the beginning. I'll say the word and the beginning sound and then when I do this, I want you to do the same thing. Ready? Not. N. Zip. Z. Bus. B. Four. F. Last one. Pick. P. How did you do? All right. Next part, I'm going to say a word that is actually a big word made of two little words. We're going to say the word, which is called a compound word, and then we're going to say the two small words that make up the big word. Are you ready? Remember, I do it with my hands and my mouth saying it, and then you repeat it. 
Let's go. Mailbox. Mail box. Now your turn. Mail box. Good job. Firefly. Fire fly. Your turn. Firefly. Bathroom. Bath room. Cowboy. Cow boy. Sunburn, sun, burn, sunburn, sun, burn. How did you do? That's a little tricky, but you'll get better the more we do it. One good thing about doing videos rather than being at school is we don't have to wear the masks and we can sing. Let's do our Itsy Bitsy Spider poem and you can either say it or sing it, but let's use our hands with the motions I've taught you. Are you ready? The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. How did you do? I'd say you did a good job. Now don't forget, watch the videos that I've given your parents the link to, the YouTube videos that normally I would show after we eat snacks. There's some stories and some songs that you can practice at home. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you the next time I make a video. Make sure you watch it. Have a great day.